Today, I'm going to talk about Intelligent Therapeutics announcement that they are also going to do base editing. This is the domain of Beam Therapeutics, my favorite biotech company. What does this mean for us investors? Stay tuned for the rest of the video. In the meantime, here's a quick intro of this channel for new viewers. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. For starters, please note that I hold a small position in Beam Therapeutics before and during the making of this video. I'll try to be as neutral as possible, but please take note that I'm a Beam Therapeutics shareholder and therefore I may be positively biased. I've been avoiding making this section of the video, but to understand the current situation, I have no choice but to give a historical perspective. Let's cue in the drama. CRISPR-Cas enzymes was first identified in bacteria. This is a defense mechanism for the bacteria against viruses that infect and kill it. The defense mechanism involves an enzyme, Cas, which cuts DNA. But in order for them to do so, they need a guide. This comes in the form of an RNA widely known as CRISPR, which in turn was originally derived from the genome of the virus. In the next encounter with the virus, this will lead to the degradation of the viral genome, thus saving the bacteria from potential death. This phenomenon was worked on by many. At first, the scientists did not know that CRISPR and Cas worked together. A Japanese researcher, Yoshizumi Ishino from Osaka University was the first to describe CRISPR in 1987. And another group first described Cas in 2003. And the first four were named Cas1 through 4. In 2005, three independent groups hypothesized how the two components functioned together and this was confirmed experimentally in 2007. Because the science behind the first four Cas enzymes were complicated and there were disagreements on the exact mechanism, work began on a simpler form Cas9, the focus of the gene editing technologies today. Originally, it was a four-component system. Later, Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Carpentier were the first ones to modify it into a simpler two-component system, which I described earlier. So where's the drama? A good storyteller has to build up the suspense, right? Dode, Na, and Carpentier postulated that the single guide RNA can be used to target any DNA of interest, and Cas9 will cut it subsequently. This work was published in August of 2012. At the same time, another group led by Lithuanian scientist Virginijus Sixnis came to the same conclusion by actually showing it to work in bacteria but without the donor and Carpentier simplifications. The sad thing was, when this work was first submitted in April of 2012, it took one month to be rejected. It was only accepted by another journal another month later and finally got published after the Donor and Carpentier article. In contrast, the two ladies got their submissions reviewed and accepted within two weeks. I feel for the Lithuanian scientist because he wasn't widely recognized. It was his experimental data that shows the use of CRISPR-Cas as a molecular scissors which led to the dawn of the genomics revolution. I'm tipping my hats off to him in respect. <sighs> Dodna and Carpentier simplified the CRISPR-Cas system in a test tube, whilst Virginia Sixnis showed it works in bacteria, modifying it to recognize other sequences. And two other groups, Feng Zhang and George Church, subsequently showed in 2013 February that gene editing works in human cells. Dona and Carpentier went on to file a patent for their CRISPR-Cas9 in vitro work, whilst Feng Zhang filed a patent for CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing in eukaryotic cells. Not to be outdone, Virginia Sixnis also filed for a patent before Dona and Carpentier, which has subsequently been granted to him. Feng Zhang was also granted the patent, and ironically, this was after they paid for an expedited patent review process. I would imagine that Dona and Carpentier are both not going to be happy, so through their institutions, disputed the patent awarded to Feng Zhang in court. In 2017, three judges of the Patent Trial and Appeal Board ruled against Dona and Carpentier unanimously. In response and through their institutions, appealed the ruling and was denied in September of 2018 in a federal court which also ruled against Dona and Carpentier. I'm going to take a time out right now to give my personal thoughts. 
Whilst Dona and Carpentier are instrumental in simplifying the CRISPR-Cas system, they've only shown it to work in a test tube. There's no significant biological merits as yet. For example, mint leaves can be used to kill HIV in a test tube, but it does not work in humans. Just look at how many drugs that have been invented that was discarded because it was useless or too harmful. Thalidomide being another example was used to treat pregnant women for morning sickness. Guess what happened afterwards? And on that note, I agree with the court ruling, but unfortunately, that's not the end of it. So Dogna and Carpentier, through their institutions, continue with the fight. The odds are stacked against them because besides Feng Chang, their patent application coverage are so broad that they will have to fight against Virginia six knees since he has gotten the patent granted to him as well. Today, Dogna licenses CRISPR-Cas9 to Intellia, Carpentier to CRISPR Therapeutics, and Feng Zhang to Editas and Beam Therapeutics. Now that we are clear about the animosity of the companies, let's talk about Intellia Therapeutics doing base editing. David Liu entered into the fray in extension of Feng Chang and the George Church camp by pioneering base editing, and this was followed by prime editing. And that I refer to as Generation 2. You can click on the I button above if you want a quick refresher on what these two technologies encompass. Because these are so powerful as a tool, the first generation gene editing companies wants to dip their toes in because they know there's a limit to their first generation technology. On March 25th, 2021, Intellia Therapeutics press released the use of base editing on their platform. This has shocked many in the field because it uses the same base editing principles of beam therapeutics except for a few minor changes. And David Liu fired back with a series of tweets as you can see here. And I am similarly annoyed. I guess Beam Therapeutics will likely initiate legal proceedings against Intellia Therapeutics. So let's pour over the patents that have been awarded to David Liu and his team. The first one focuses on the exclusive use of Cas9 variants, including those that can do base editing. Intellia Therapeutics tried to sidestep this by not fusing them. Instead, pack them as separate proteins instead. I'm not a lawyer, but if you are, can you provide your thoughts in the comment section below? In addition, there are two other patents granted. One in the delivery of editing enzymes where the aminases that Intellia Therapeutics use are specifically spelled out. Not only that, another patent granted covers the use of unique molecules to aid in the LMP delivery of the gene editing complex. Intellia Therapeutics have been the most secretive here and did not reveal what method they are going to use, likely because they are threading over thin ice here, considering the granted patents to David Liu and his team. But of course, as an investor, I think that Intellia Therapeutics have crossed the line. But at the same time, this goes on to show how valuable base editing is. Otherwise, why would the first generation gene editing companies take on the legal risk to cross that line? They have to do it because it's for their survival. For the Watch Duty End Gang, next week, I'm going to talk about a new biotech company, Horizons Discovery, which has licensed a new base editing technology from Rutgers. This should be interesting. Before I end, I would like to leave you with a quote from a famous TV doctor. Breakthroughs don't happen because of the medicine. Breakthroughs happen because someone is scared to death to stop trying.